for our next speaker. So, sino ba to partner? Yan. So, he is responsible for the territory account development, planning, and execution of strategies and ex increased awareness of CompTIA. A deep understanding of the IT industry and a passion for empowering professionals with the right skills. He is driving force behind CompTIA's mission to advance the global IT industry. It is a, with honor that we present to you the country manager of CompTIA, joining us online with the topic, State of Cybersecurity. Please give it up for Mr. Orlando, Orlando Sichon Jr. Jr. But for the purpose of my presentation for today is uh, I'm going to use the uh, movie uh, top title of uh, Clear and Present Danger because I'm talking I'm talking about the state of cybersecurity. Actually, uh, this is really at this point of time where we're in. It's really, there's really a big clear and present danger uh, if we talk about the state of cybersecurity. Um, for one, um, the cyber hackers are uh, becoming more s systemic and severe. In fact, um, from the industry where I come from, around more than 80% of the top uh, companies all over the world has experienced a, uh, a, 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 a cyber breach. So this is where the issue is coming from. Uh, and, and at the same time, um, the impact to the organization, to the enterprise is really huge. Um, it's a it's a big impact on the on the operations, uh, most especially if uh, uh, it, it it can affect their uh, their daily uh, services. No, so so much so that uh, uh, the impact on the enterprise is that uh, it will they can also experience reputational damage. So uh, I'm sure most of the enterprise here are really looking forward to maintain their image as a company. Number two is that uh, uh, they can experience fines, uh, legal issues. So essentially, this is where... Uh, the issues coming from at the same time for the common master like us uh, we have some we can be a big thing to this no uh, uh, in fact uh, I'm sure uh, most of you or your friends have experienced a hacking um, personal hacking issue already including myself no so it's really a clear and present danger that we are in with the uh, uh, cyber security uh, concerns so uh, as of this point no um, I don't know if you were able to read this uh, this article that uh, the Philippines is the fourth most targeted country by cyber criminals. No, um, this was a, an article that I read way back 2022. Coming from 2017, the Philippines only ranked 30th in global standing, but now we are in the top four. And uh, I've heard recently we're not even a top two. No, um, and. Um, there, in fact, after the pandemic, it skyrocketed up to 433%. No? So um, essentially, this is where we are. Uh, this is really a clear and present danger for, for, for so, uh, most especially for our country. No? Um, in fact, that was way back 2023. And in 2000, uh, so, sorry, 2022. In 2023, there was a wave of cyber attacks last year. So um, we had the uh, cyber attack on... Uh, on uh, the uh, Philippines State Office, DOST, you know, and uh, more so the more, uh, more popular, uh, most popular one with uh, PhilHealth. No? In fact, recently we had a hacking event uh, 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 with uh, Bureau of Customs, no? even our House of Representatives. No? So um, it's really, that's why there's really a, uh, uh, an urgent concern that we really have to boost cybersecurity, no less than the President has directed the Armed Forces of the Philippines and Philippine National Police to strengthen our cybersecurity program. 
So actually, it's not only about the Philippines that we're having issues. It's, this is even an issue worldwide, no? And um, in fact, uh, in Q1 2020, 186% uh, breach accounts globally, no? Uh, but uh, interestingly, um, for Southeast Asia, um, we are number one, no? Uh, uh, and in, uh, compared to Indonesia, with about 320 million population, uh, we have a, a, a greater reach, no? Uh, for the Philippines, that um, we have a, a breach of about um, two breach Filipino accounts per one thousand per one thousand uh, people. No? So uh, this is really the state of uh, cybersecurity uh, all over the world, and including here in the Philippines. And even our landscape is much more, uh, you know, really in a very dark situation. Um, in fact, um, from what I gather, uh, most of our uh, professional cybersecurity uh, experts. Um, most of them are really working now abroad. No? So that's why um, um, uh, we have some issues uh, left and right and center of the uh, Philippine cybersecurity landscape. So uh, in fact, um, according to the latest uh, number that I had, it's a point. we have about probably 300 experts and 70% are working out of the country. So uh, essentially, I'd like just to share with you this uh, this interesting article I came across that no less than the cabinet secretary uh, from, from an article uh, with, uh, that I read that uh, there's, there's really a big demand on cybersecurity because of the many cyber breaches that we are being uh, uh, as presented. No? So um, for those who, of you who are, who are here, I'm sure for the students that are here to, to, to learn about uh, the cybersecurity landscape, you are on the right track because uh, you, it's an in-demand uh, um, uh, professional, and I, I believe that uh, uh, it's even a very uh, highly compensated uh, 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 profession. So um, uh, even no less than the secretary himself, uh, Ivan Uy, has mentioned that there's a two million job vacancies, and um, it's there's really a big uh, job ahead because. Uh, the, uh, the, even from the enterprise side, that due to the e-commerce platform, uh, e-wallets, no, the, uh, they had to build their cyber security in order to protect their customers, no. So much so that the really government, in fact, uh, this is one thing that I'm discussing with the ICT that they look forward as part of the national cyber security plan to look into a uh, cyber security upskilling and reskilling program, no, to be able to uh, address these demands of cyber security issues and concerns. So, um, in fact, uh, there's even an, a, a really a, a, a program by the by DICT to reach out to different institutions such as the colleges and universities for the upskilling uh, talents and uh, needed by the government as well. So, um, as a landscape, no, um, I'm sure you all know that uh, this is uh, happening all over, uh, and uh, hybrid, according to this uh, article I came across from University of Maryland, a hacker attack happens every 39 seconds. And um, recently, I was surprised that uh, even one LGU, because we, we had a tool, a platform to check how many attacks is being done, one LGU alone will be experiencing 3,000 attacks every day. So that's uh, the magnitude of this ESOM cyber uh, threats landscape. And um, the thing about cyber, uh, cyber uh, issues is that there's really a growing organization of hackers, because um, uh, the thing here is that um, uh, holding I think the mindset of the uh, hackers is that it's easier to become a hacker than to rob a bank. And, um, and um, the thing here is that uh, these hackers, uh, they're, they are also doing, uh, from what I learned, no, they have their own cy um, cyber hacker university <laughs> for them to really uh, improve their skills, upskill as well, no? and um, uh, for them also to protect themselves because they always have these layers, like an onions, layers of onions of protection that it's really hard to uh, to find them, to detect them, and to prosecute them as well. So uh, this digital transformation is providing us a very good opportunity and uh, benefits, but there's also a uh, 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 the uh, negative side of it. No, uh, if no adequate controls are not implemented, and this is what's the big issue right now. It's all about money uh, because of on cybersecurity. No from previously in 2016, it was just uh, the cost of data breach was only $4 million, but they project by 2025, it will become a $2.1 trillion problem. 
So this is the uh, thing about cyber crime. And um, well, top security concerns is all about data loss and leakage and malware and hacking and even uh, uh, a ransomware. No? But the thing is that um, because data is the new gold, the new uh, diamond, no? so um, most of really are after the data leakages. No? Uh, so, uh, so that they can be, our, our um, uh, data can be sold on the dark web. And also, we are really at risk, most of us, for, due to the rise of social networking. That's part of the factors of cybersecurity uh, breaches. And uh, so <laughs> the thing about the Philippines is that uh, we uh, somehow um, is number one all over the world in terms of a uh, number of hours spent in social media, more than four, almost close to five hours a day. So that's why uh, uh, we are very vulnerable, in, in, that's what I'm saying. So uh, at the end of the day, there's no really 100% protection in cybersecurity. This is the thing. This is something that we have to accept uh, as a fact. No? But um, all, at the end of the day, it's all about the human error as the number of threat to IT security. So um, we, for some of the mindset is that uh, from, from the enterprise, from, they say that you know we have the best firewall in the world. But uh, the main issue is that uh, uh, it's not about the human firewall. It's all about the, uh, obviously not, it's not all about the uh, uh, physical firewall, but it's all about the human firewall because um, human error is the number of threat to IT security. So this is one thing that uh, major issue right now from the industry that uh, it's not all about the, you spend so much on the firewall, but it's, uh, it's more of the, uh, the human firewall that should provide the uh, importance, no? Uh, because al always, the, whoever is the weakest link you know, uh, that will provide the uh, issue of cybersecurity. So um, factors about AI, I'm just going to run through this more quickly because Charmaine has really done a tremendous uh, job in terms of explaining about AI. Um, well, AI can be a, a friend, but some also uh, an enemy, a foe, because uh, it, it, has, it can also impact, because um, even the cyber criminals are using AI now. No? They can sleep and yet uh, program the AI to, to continuously uh, attack uh, the network. No? So, um, so essentially, uh, what's important right now, uh, because this is going to be big, you know, this is, uh, AI is the buzzword, everyone's talking about it. Uh, according to what I read, AI will even be bigger than the internet and cloud combined. Okay, so um, but the thing is about uh, AI um, for me, par particularly, it's helping a lot in my job as well. So um, it's it's a disruptor, but it can also disrupt our, our, our every, every day of our life. No, um, and um, the landscape is that uh, uh, it can really help us because uh, what used to be a uh, a, uh, a lot of time to uh, do in terms of tasks, it can really uh, go down in minutes because of AI. So um, uh, the thing about AI that I would like to highlight is that uh, uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's all about uh, garbage in, garbage out, and uh, it, uh, it's all within our hands as well. Uh, that So long as we have the right skill set and competencies, we can always have the advantage and uh, uh, we not we cannot be overpowered by AI. So um, uh, essentially, a while ago, uh, there was a question to Charmaine whether it, uh, there, the, the AI will have an effect. Um, yes, there are opportunities, but at the same time, to be honest, based on the, uh, based on what I have uh, just uh, shared right now, the uh, uh, the McKenzie Global Institute's uh, latest report, it will have AI will have an impact into our. Uh, 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 work, no? a lot of jobs could become obsolete because of automation, because of IoT, uh, again, because of AI. And based on their forecast, by 2030, it is estimated that 400 to 800 individuals of the workforce could be displaced and may need to find new jobs by 2030. This will be a worldwide uh, issues and concern challenge. In fact, I just uh, re um, uh, watched uh, a year back, the, uh, the CNN Philippines featured that even our Department of Labor is concerned about this issue. No? Uh, because, um, but the, at the end of the day, even if with, with AI and automation, there will be still an uh, opportunity. But we need to be ready. We have to reskill, upgrade, and, and uh, be relevant in the workforce. No? So uh, this, when, um, this is something that uh, will really have an impact uh, on us because um, 
Uh, this is tomorrow, but uh, as we see, but it, it actually arrived a few years ago. So, um, um, so this is the impact of uh, of AI. No, uh, later on, for the coffee shop, you will have a barista serving your uh, fresh brewed coffee. There will there will be no cashiers, no busboy because uh, and this works twenty four by seven. Uh, no need for uh, to pay annual leaves, sick leaves, or whatever. No more uh, strikes. No, but we thought that even the doctors are spared there's now a robotics a, a surgeon no they can do more accurate no uh, as as a surgeon no so this is one thing that's uh, really it's all about tomorrow even our favorite grab driver grab drivers will have an issue later on with driverless cars because of the global digital transformation it is everywhere this is our ecosystem right now that we are that we are in no so um the thing i would like to share also that uh, I don't want to sound a prophet of doom all throughout this presentation, but I'd like to also present the opportunity as a prophet of boom as well. And the opportunity is that, uh, uh, the, the, according to the International Data Corporation, um, it's, it's already almost close to $6 trillion business uh, as an IT business. In fact, we just have to check on the top uh, corporations all over the world. We have, um, and, and those who have achieved a milestone in reaching one trillion dollar business. You have, you, you already have uh, Tesla, you have uh, Apple, uh, and you have uh, Google, you have Facebook, you have Alibaba. Uh, uh, so these are the top companies all over the world dominating the ICT market, and they're growing big, better. So it's going to projected to increase um, uh, for the many years ahead. So, um, so uh, opportunities really is all about the billions of. Uh, money poured into IT infrastructure. So, for those who are you, in, uh, for those of the students who here who are into IT, congratulations, you are in the right track. Because I believe that uh, there's so many opportunities abound for you who are uh, going for upon graduation. Because uh, even our local government units invested in the smart cities. We will have our own subway later on, and uh, so many IT professors will be required. We have the 5G wireless. This is a game changer because the 5G wireless in, uh, in, in, in return will have more e-commerce uh, transactions. So they need to have more ITs and cybersecurity professionals uh, because it's easier to do business in, in, the, in the internet. And cybersecurity is another big thing that's going to grow really big, uh, not only from the enterprise, but even from governments because of the cyber uh, hacking issues. So um, let me now introduce the company that I represent. The company is called Comtia. I'm the country manager of Comtia that covers the territory of the Philippines. Comtia stands for Computing Technology Industry Association. And um, um, we are present across the globe in 150 countries. And um, 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 if I have to, to explain our company, we are a nonprofit IT industry association. Our mandate is to educate the IT workforce. That's really our uh, our objective, and to provide this uh, workforce the opportunity to work in the industry. Because there's really a huge problem right now from the industry. There's a, a, a shortage of IT and cybersecurity professionals uh, worldwide. Uh, in fact, um, from what I gathered, in the U.S. alone, there's about a million job openings for IT. And uh, it's not all about the, uh, 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 a lot of them are uh, not not qualified, but most of them have their uh, skills gap as a big issue. So um, for our organization as a nonprofit IT industry, we have the big vendors as part of our uh, industry partners. We have the Cisco, HP, Fuji Xerox, Lucera, Intel, Del Rico. No? Um, but uh, most of the government organization in the U.S. Uh, are really uh, uh, promoting embedding uh, Comtia. And we have several academic partners already here, including uh, Faith uh, uh, Academy. So uh, if we have to look into the Comtia, we are the worldwide leading provider of vendor neutral IT certification. Why vendor neutral? Because um, if you compare with us with Microsoft and Cisco, Microsoft are vendor specific. Uh, they're selling a uh, a, uh, a product, uh, and uh, you're going to learn about the skills and competencies only uh, that will be focused on their product specifically. Unlike Comtia, we are a vendor neutral, vendor, vendor agnostic, wherein you'll be more uh, multi uh, 
uh, faceted in terms of your uh, presentation, right? in terms of your skills and competencies. So um, why CompTIA? Because we are developed by experts uh, uh, and learn the latest skills. Uh, we focus on technologies and competencies. And good thing about CompTIA is um, we are performance-based right from the start. And we have passed all the ISO standards. So, um, well, essentially from what we gathered, CompTIA uh, uh, is, you can be promoted within one year of hire um, based on our survey. Um, and you can outperform non-IT certified professionals in your network. And you can contribute greater value to the enterprise. And if you are, by the way, uh, SiteSpeed is our, one of our dynamic partners. And uh, if you are looking forward to get certified with Compia, please uh, try to reach out to them because they can provide training and provide you with the uh, opportunity to become a Compia certified IT professionals and be a part of this 3.5 million Compia certified uh, professionals. And I'm really uh, very, um, uh, I'm proud to say that even the Department of Defense of the US somehow requires mandates and there's a DOD directive 8570.01 is a mandate that anyone performing any IT drop role must be CompTIA certified. So uh, we have the right pathway for everyone, for those who are interested. Uh, we have the core skill certification from the basic of IT to A plus hardware, software, network, and security. It's up to you whether which infrastructure pathway that you would like to go into. But uh, um, maybe later, uh, if I have, I have time, I'll get back to this. Uh, I'll get back to this later on. But um, job opportunities. So of course, has some many job opportunities abound for for all for all of you. In fact, um, I just got this from the net that even Accenture, when they have their job openings here in the Philippines, they look for company certification as a requirement. No? Uh, these are just some qualifications that I got uh, in, J in Japan. Even Microsoft, lo and behold, when they have they have their own job opening, but they have uh, great respect for Compia as part of their uh, uh, requirement. Okay, so uh, in Japan, so there's so many opportunities about for for uh, for for the uh, for the job uh, of uh, training. I mean, for the job opportunities worldwide, even in Taiwan, Korea. Okay, Thailand, Indonesia, USA. So, uh, and according to a uh, survey made, no, uh, about four by uh, person view, one of the leading assessment center in the world. According to them, 4.3 million jobs could be left unfilled by 2020 because of this the tech talent shortage. So, this is a major issue from the industry. So, it's very important that you have the skill set that we provide. Because at the end of the day, uh, the greatest global currency right now is not all about money. At the end of the day, it's all about the skill set that we can provide on the table. So these are the key findings. Employers are prioritizing uh, upskilling efforts. Uh, IT certification helps employers find and hire the best talent. So this is the priority of uh, IT managers. They really would like to, to see talent, and uh, including the IT managers. So. Um, I'd like to share with you as a key takeaway for those who like to know whether your account has been compromised, has been breached, please take a photo of this uh, of this slide for you to know whether your email or your phones are they been hacked already in the uh, so that you can secure you can probably provide a two factor authentication and change your number, change your password. So uh, okay, so. Um, I still have uh, five minutes of my presentation. Um, so digital transformation without cybersecurity is a re recipe for disaster. Okay, so um, uh, this is something that we have to prepare and uh, we have to protect ourselves and uh, contribute to our organization uh, by prov providing the right skill set and competencies. So anyway, this is what I, I had just shared. Now, um, stay safe and stay current.